Lab number 105, lab dental charting. GV Black, no really, really need to know much about GV Black, just that the cavity uh, classifications were named after him. Okay, class, class 1 carries, and you need to know all of these, class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, class 1 carries are cavities that are located in the pit and fissures of teeth. They're located in occlusal surfaces of premolars and molars. Again, occlusal surfaces are the biting surfaces of the back teeth, okay, occlusal. Buccal and lingual pits, so on the cheek side or the tongue side, there's a little pit where you can have class one cavities. On the lingual pit as well, or on the tongue side, the cingulum of the maxillary incisors, or that little bump that you can feel on the back side of your front teeth. That's the cingulum. You can get a class one cavity there. Okay, so it's a one surface cavity, either on the biting surface of back teeth, or on the pits of uh, anterior teeth. Again, here's class one. These are the occlusal surface of back teeth. Here's the lingual pit of the incisors, and here's a buccal pit class one. Okay, so the most common one is this one, the occlusal surface of premolars and molars. Okay, clinically this is what they look like, class one cavities. Here they are on the lingual surface of a cingulum on an anterior tooth, and there they are restored. Here it is on the buccal of the lower uh, molar. And this is a class one buccal uh, restoration. Class two, again, they form on the proximal or on the contact area of uh, posterior teeth, so premolars or molars. Again, the contact area or the proximal area is the area that is adjacent or next to a, a, a tooth next to it, okay? So it's anything in between those back teeth. And here they are, you can see these shadows up here, these are class 2, they're in between, usually underneath the contact of back teeth. This is a class 2 amalgam or a restoration there, you can see how it breaks in between the contacts. So are these, class 2. Here they are prepared, this is how we cut into the cavities from the top and we, we break a little box and we can restore, again, the proximal or the contact area between uh, premolars or molar areas. And here are some metal amalgams, and there they are restored. Again, these are class two cavity restorations. Class three, again, you've got to stay, is usually uh, in the proximal surface of anterior teeth, laterals or centrals. Uh, again, it forms like a little C, but it has to stay in the middle third of the tooth. Okay, you can't come and break the corner because uh, then it becomes a different, a different uh, category. Class three, again, are in the middle third of the of the anatomical crown. Here you can see class three restorations uh, on these front teeth. These are old resin restorations that are all stained. Again, you can see how they're in the middle third of the tooth. Here you can see if you shine a light through them, you can see the class three cavities underneath the enamel. This is what they look like if we cut into them. Again, leaving the corner intact. You can't break the corner or it becomes a class four. Again, class three is in the middle third of the anterior tooth, the clinical crown. And here's another one on this canine, class three. And there it is restored. Again, class four, if the angle breaks, then it becomes a class four, or if it's missing the angle. Here you have a class three, but if the angle is gone, then it becomes a class four. So it's a restoration, including the proximal surface of anterior teeth, including the incisal edge, okay? Again, incisal is the biting surface of the anterior teeth. Here you have a clinical case, fractured of the class four, mesial, incisal, 
class 4. Okay, here it is restored. This is a big class 4 where the whole tooth is broken there about halfway. Again, you're missing the mesial incisal corner and the distal incisal corner. This is a class 3 cavity. Again, on the distal portion of this uh, central incisor. And then this lateral here is a big class 3 and probably a class 4 because this is going to break when we clean it out. Next one is a class 5. Again, class 5s are on the cervical third of either front teeth or back teeth. It doesn't matter. And it could be on the facial side or it could be on the lingual side. And again, class 5s are on the cervical third of back teeth or of, of any tooth, but class 5 meaning down by the gum line on the cervical third. Here's a big class 5 on a central incisor. These are at fractions or toothbrush abrasions. They're very common. Again, you can see them again on the cervical third or the gingival third of, a, of the anatomic crown. And there they are restored. Again, toothbrush abrasion or, or uh, at fractions. Some more there and there they are restored. Class six cavities occur on the incisal edge of anterior teeth or they on the cusp tip of posterior teeth. Okay, so on the edge or on the cusp tip. And here you can see that on the cusp tip of molars or cusp tip of premolars or the canine. Here's a clinical view. Again, on the incisor, there's wear and decay into the dentin when we probe. You can see that one on the lower incisor. On the cuspid, you can see here cavities on the cusp tip and on this molar right on the cusp tip or this wear areas on the cusp. Those are class six of molars and premolars or incisal edges of anterior teeth. Abbreviations for tooth surfaces. Okay, single tooth surfaces, you've got O for occlusal, I for incisal, M for mesial, D for distal, B for buccal, L for lingual. When you combine these surfaces, and this is something you need to remember, and it's a fill in the blank question, okay? So when you combine multiple surfaces, you've got MOD, which means M, mesial, occlusal, distal. DO, distal, occlusal. MO, mesial, occlusal. MI, mesial, incisal. DI, distal, incisal. DL, distal lingual, MODBL, mesial, occlusal, distal, buccal, lingual. So make sure you know how to combine these surfaces and be able to tell what, uh, what they are. Okay, basic charting terms. You have an abscess, which is a localized area of infection. <clears throat> Again, this shows an abscess up on the gum area of an anterior incisor and you see a shadow on the x-ray. A bridge, this is a fixed uh, restoration that is cemented on, on a tooth when a tooth is missing. And a bridge consists of two parts. You've got abutments, which are the attaching teeth, and then you have the pontic, which is the, the tooth that's being replaced. Okay, so you've got abutments, or the anchor, and then the missing teeth, which are the pontics. Here's a, a picture of a couple bridges. You have a porcelain bridge here, three units, one, two, three. You have an anchor here and an anchor here, which are the abutments. And over here, you've got an anchor here and an anchor here, which are the abutments. This is gold and this is porcelain. Again, the pontics are the missing teeth. The abutments are what anchors the bridge on. And these are cemented and so they don't come off. Again, this bottom tooth here, we're missing some teeth. This was going to be an abutment. This is going to be an abutment. And you can replace it with a bridge. This is a four unit bridge. Two, two abutments and two pontics. All right, so
technically that's a five unit bridge, two abutments and three pontes. Cantilever bridge, this is a bridge that's only anchored on one side. So you have one abutment and this tooth is hanging on to this one tooth here. Okay, so you, you, it's either metal or it could be all porcelain. Here we have a, a, an implant that you can see the, the cap on. So when that's taken out, then we can put a, an implant crown that's attached or screwed onto that implant. And this is a, a cantilever lateral incisor. So it's only anchored on one tooth. That's a cantilever bridge. A Maryland bridge is when we're missing a tooth and we don't sacrifice the, the adjacent teeth. We just put metal wings on the back of some teeth. You can see here's the missing tooth. This is the framework, metal framework, and then you have the pontic, and these are just uh, metal wings that are bonded on to the teeth, so you don't have to cut down the teeth adjacent to the missing one. And that's called the Maryland Bridge. On the bottom here, we're missing two teeth. You have the natural teeth that weren't sacrificed, and you have metal wings behind these two natural teeth uh, that are bonded on to support this uh, Maryland Bridge. A crown is a restoration that covers the entire uh, clinical crown of, of the tooth. If the tooth is uh, too worn down or not enough healthy tooth structure to just replace a filling, then we have to put a crown. Again, it covers the entire surface of the, of the tooth. So here we have a gold crown. Again, you can see how it covers the entire biting surface and also the buccal and the lingual. Here's a, a, an example of a, a tooth that has a very large restoration that's failing, so you can't replace that. So you remove that and you put a all porcelain crown. And then this amalgam here was also replaced with looks like a, uh, another porcelain restoration. A complete denture uh, is when the patient is missing all of the dentition. So you have the upper teeth or lower teeth are missing, again, complete. No natural teeth is resting on their gums. Partial denture is when there are some natural teeth uh, remaining, uh, and so we're just replacing some of the missing uh, dentition. Um, and it's anchored, again, we have abutments here with these clasps. You have abutment here, abutment here, abutment here, and abutment here and you're just replacing part of the missing or part of the teeth. That's why it's called a partial denture. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we do uh, restorations. Again, all of these are restorations, crowns, fillings, uh, dentures, Maryland Bridge, all those are restorations. Drifting is when a tooth starts shifting from one way to the, to the neck, uh, either forward or backward. Uh, if there's a tooth missing, you can see how this tooth is drifting forward. It changes the bite. It's not something that you want to happen, but if nothing's done to replace missing teeth, you get these teeth that start to shift, changing the patient's bite. If there's no teeth on the bottom, then you get some drifting also that's called super eruption, where the tooth just drips, drifts down into a missing space. Incipient is basically the beginning or the early stages of, of something, okay? So incipient decay is just uh, basically decalcified enamel, white areas, white patch, patchy areas. They kind of look like chalky areas, when, like when they take braces off. So here, this patient didn't do too good a job of brushing their teeth. So you can see the brackets of the braces where they used to be. So these are the beginning of, of cavities that the patient didn't do too, got too good a job of, of uh, brushing, and so we've got the beginnings or incipient lesions. Mobility is measured from zero to four, and this we measure by tapping on a tooth from buccal lingual to see if there's any mobility. And all teeth will have some degree of mobility, but the more uh, mobile it is, from zero to four, uh, the looser it is. So four being very loose, uh, one or zero just slightly mobile. An overhang is an, an excess of filling material that we can see usually on an x-ray, sometimes clinically, but here you have an amalgam filling and a big overhang, this blob of amalgam that's in between, 
that will have to be removed in order to keep the gum healthy. If it's not removed, the gum's just going to keep bleeding, be irritated, and not very healthy for the patient long term. It'll cause a bone defect. Okay, here you have a big overhang on a crown, okay, that you don't want. You want a flush margin where the tooth is coming up and the crown should join up flush to that. So these you have to replace or restore. A periodontal pocket is the, the pocket that we measure around the tooth using, using our probe that we used uh, last, last week in our lab. Again, healthy gum, we measure one to three but those pockets will get deeper and deeper as the gum disease progresses. So uh, we measure in millimeters and those numbers we give them out to you when we're doing the exam and you just chart them down as we're, as we're walking along the, the teeth there giving you the different measurements. Again, here's a periodontal probe measuring the gum of, on a healthy patient and again on a, on a patient with some gum disease you have bone loss and attachment loss and again the probe is going to go deeper here we have a, about an eight nine millimeter pocket and here we have a two or three millimeter pocket restoration again it's anything that we use any material or or any uh, any uh, rest, restoration that we use to to replace missing tooth structure or a missing tooth so again all those are restorations bridges crowns partial dentures, dentures, all those are considered restorations. And again, here you have a partial, a gold crown, an implant crown, a bridge, a single unit crown. Okay, we're not showing a denture, but a denture and a partial denture are also restorations. A root canal uh, is is an attempt to that we do an attempt to try to save a tooth that otherwise would need to come out. So if a cavity has gotten too big or the filling has gotten too big and the nerve is not happy anymore, then the patient will usually come in and they're in pain and we have to either decide to take the tooth out or try to save it by doing a root canal. And so we remove the pulp, which is the vital uh, nerve and vital uh, uh, nerve endings and, and innervation and the blood supply inside the tooth and if it's going bad it will cause pain. So we have to remove it and try to save the tooth by putting a, a plastic material in there in its place. So here's just a cartoon. Here's an infected pulp. You clean the top, you disinfect the inside using some files, and you finally put a filling inside. That's what it looks like on an x-ray, the fill material inside the canal. A sealant is a resin material that we use to try to protect uh, uh, usually a, a newly erupted uh, molar that has very deep anatomy with deep grooves and pits like your models there make sure you look at the grooves and pits so if those are very deep and we see that the patient's or the child's teeth are starting to stain or we see uh, uh, potential for decay then we recommend these sealants which, see, which seal the fissures and the pits so that the, the patient will we can decrease the likelihood of them getting a cavity, although uh, it's not 100% uh, effective. Every now and then we do end up with cavities underneath sealants. So here's a, a, a tooth, again, with very deep grooves and pits, and here it is cleaned out and with a sealant there. Okay, color coding and symbols in dental charting. Again, dental charts vary from office to office, so you have to pay attention wherever you go on how things are done, but there's a pretty universal way on how to chart manually, okay? So um, here are some examples on, on how, how things uh, can be done. Again, colors and symbols are usually, for the most part, pretty uh, universal, uh, used from office to office, although check on, on what every office uses. Uh, but it should be pretty close with slight variations. Colors, red is usually for dental work that needs to be completed and blue or black is dentistry that has already been completed and is existing. Okay, symbols are the following. Okay, so for tooth number one and four you've got missing teeth. So it's symboled by an X or a line through the tooth. 
Okay, so just draw a line or an X uh, for whatever tooth is missing. Tooth number two would be super eruption. Okay, uh, super eruption of a tooth basically is drifting in a downward or an upward direction because there's a missing opposing tooth. So if it's an upper tooth and the bottom tooth is missing, the tooth is going to super erupt downward. And if it's a bottom tooth, it's going to super erupt upward because it's trying to hit something. Until it comes into uh, into occlusion or bite on something. Again, you're going to draw an arrow right next to the tooth in the way that it's erupting. Recession is indicated by lines drawn on the root of the teeth that, are, that represent the number of recession in millimeters. So if there's three millimeters recession, you're going to draw a horizontal line or three horizontal lines on the root of the tooth. Uh, if it's six millimeters recessions, you can put one line on top, one on the bottom with a six in the middle, just so you don't have to count all the little lines there. So again, recession is a horizontal lines across the roots of the tooth. Again, drifting is similar to uh, super eruption, which you indi indicate by an arrow in the direction that the tooth is drifting. So if the tooth is drifting forward or tipping forward, you draw an arrow next to the tooth or just above the symbol of the tooth, uh, putting it that it's going towards the arrow forward. Okay, an existing root canal is indicated by a line drawn through the root of the tooth, not the crown, just the root, uh, and it stops at the apex before you go out the end of the, of the, of the apex there. So this is an existing root canal because it has a black or blue line, okay? So an existing root canal is black or blue. An abscess is indicated by a small circle drawn at the apex or just above the apex of the end of the root, okay? So it's a, a little circle in red because it's an infection. Just draw a red circle at the apex of the root. Okay. Mobility is indicated by a Roman numeral placed above the root, or I'm sorry, above the tooth. So you're going to put a Roman numeral 1 if it's just slightly mobile, or a Roman numeral 4 if it's very mobile. Okay, And the doctor will be telling you tooth number 7 has 1, 2, 3, or 4 mobility, and you put that Roman numeral up above the tooth. Uh, tooth number nine has a root canal that's needed, so a needed root canal, you put a red line through the root uh, that indicates that the tooth is needing a root canal. So again, it's a root, a red line through the root, starting starting at the at the base of the crown up to the apex of the tooth. An existing PFM or porcelain fused metal crown is indicated by circling the crown with diagonal lines drawn through the crown. Okay, so you would circle the crown itself, outline it, and then you draw hashes, uh, diagonal lines across it. Okay, if it's if it has metal that can be seen, you can put draw the metal on the lingual side wherever the metal is seen. Okay, if it's fully covered. And sometimes you can put a little, a little bit of, of metal showing at the margin if you can see it. Uh, again, not necessary, but, but it does give you a little bit more information when you're looking at the chart if you can uh, draw it as accurate as possible. Uh, a distal facial class 2 filling is needed. So again, it's a, if it's needed, it's going to be in red and you're going to outline the, the the filling and that should be a class 3 filling needed on tooth number 11 so again it's going to be a distofacial class 3 filling on number 11 and it's in red number 12 uh, is an existing distal occlusal amalgam filling again it's an amalgam so it's existing so it's in blue and you're going to fill it in because it's a metal it's an amalgam Okay, so it's going to be filled in on tooth number 12, D-O amalgam. The overhang uh, 
on the restoration is indicated by a little triangle pointing to the area of the overhang. So between the teeth, wherever the overhang is, you're going to put a, a little triangle indicating that that, air, uh, that area has an overhang that needs to be removed. If it's a full gold crown, an existing full gold crown, you're going to outline it and you're going to fill in the whole crown either in blue or in black. Again, no hashes on an all-metal crown. It's filled in completely. And you fill in the buckle side and the lingual side. Okay, existing amalgams. On a clusal, existing amalgam on 15. On the middle circle, you, you, cir you fill in that little circle uh, right in the middle of the diagram, of the occlusal diagram. Just the middle, not the mesial or the buccal or the distal or the, or the lingual. Just the middle little circle. Okay, it says that you have an existing amalgam. An existing sealant, all you do is on the tooth, tooth number 18, you're going to put an existing, which is a black or a blue letter S right on the occlusal surface, okay? So right where the occlusal circle is, put an S that's black or blue. The furcations are where the roots divide, okay? Uh, so for a class one furcation, which is a, an area that we can detect where the roots start to divide, uh, if it's just barely, you can barely feel it, we leave, a, it's a triangle, it's an inverted triangle just outlining the bottom of the root. If it's a class 2 furcation, then you're going to close the triangle. Okay, so it's an inverted V, but the triangle is closed. And then if it's a class 3 furcation, where, where I can put my explorer and go from one side of the tooth all the way out the other side, that's a class 3 furcation, and you're going to fill the triangle so that it's, it's in black. Okay, tooth number 19 through 21 is an existing full gold bridge. So this is an all metal bridge. Tooth number 19 and 21 are the uh, abutments. So you're going to circle those and you're going to color those in black. Okay, color the buckle, color the lingual of tooth number 19 and 20. Tooth number 20, or I'm sorry, tooth number 19 and 21. And tooth number 20 has a line through it because it's a missing tooth. And then you're going to color the, the anatomic crown, the, the crown part of the, of the picture. And then you're going to connect those missing teeth uh, with uh, little railroad tracks, okay, so that you know it's a bridge. If it's an all-metal bridge, you're going to, again, it's, it's all colored in. Number 23 is a class 5 facial filling. Again, class 5s are on the gingival, uh, or I'm sorry, on the cervical, a third of the tooth, or the gingival third, which is the same thing. And again, you, it, you draw it by uh, a red uh, area on that uh, cervical third, on the facial side. So right by the gum line, you're going to paint a little red area that says it needs a facial filling. Number 25 is an existing dental implant. So again, on the root of that tooth number 25, you're going to kind of outline a like a little cylinder, uh, like a little tube, outline it and make it look kind of squarish. And you can put little hash, hash marks on it. Again, that's a titanium a titanium post that's existing instead of the, of the tooth. So that's an existing dental implant. Uh, tooth number 28, 26 through 28 are, has an existing Maryland bridge. Again, those you can do uh, the missing tooth. You circle that missing tooth and you shade it and put hashes if it's a porcelain tooth. <coughs> and then around around that uh, pontic, you're going to put two curved lines going onto the teeth adjacent to it that represent the metal wings like we showed on the picture earlier of the Maryland Bridge. Those metal wings go around to the natural teeth and those are the ones wings that are bonded onto those two teeth. 
229 has an existing occlusal resin or composite. Okay, so this, because it's an existing, it's going to be black or blue, but if it's a resin, it's not filled in. You do not fill in a resin filling. You do fill in for an amalgam filling. Okay, so on this one, you're going to leave it hollow. Mesial occlusal distal resin on tooth number 30. Again, this one you're not going to shade it in, but this one is needed, so it's in red. It's not existing. It's in red, so you're going to make a little bow around that, that little diagram. Just paint that little bow from mesial occlusal distal, but leave it hollow because it's a needed occlusal resin or composite. 31, number, tooth number 31 is missing, so it's symbolized by an X or a line through it. And tooth number 32 is impacted or it hasn't erupted. And that is just uh, outlined by uh, putting a circle around the entire tooth that says that uh, it's missing or it hasn't erupted yet. All righty.